Starting off with the big news, Artemis. Last Monday, the Artemis I Orion spacecraft executed its return-powered flyby burn around the moon, which put it in a, on a trajectory uh, back toward Earth. Uh, so it had been in a distant retrograde orbit around the moon, but uh, it had executed a burn a few days previously that uh, set it up to fly by the moon at a distance of about 81 miles. Um, uh, sort of sling, slingshotting around the moon, and with the addition of the return-powered flyby burn, set it on a trajectory to head straight back to Earth. Uh, the burn occurred on the far side of the moon, so we couldn't receive any live signals from Orion until a few minutes later. Its return flyby brought it, uh, again, within about 81 miles of the lunar surface, which was not quite as close as its outbound-powered flyby, but... Uh, still pretty close. And remembering that the moon does not have uh, uh, an atmosphere to speak of, there, uh, there isn't an issue of, of atmospheric pressure you know, causing drag on the spacecraft, even at a low altitude. Once it emerged from behind the moon, it started sending pictures like the one you see here, with the thin crescent of Earth rising over the limb of the moon, backlit by the sun. Fast forward six days to this morning. This shot was taken when Orion was about 15,000 miles or 24,000 kilometers away, racing toward the Earth at 6,000 miles per hour. When it left the moon, it wasn't going nearly that speed. The acceleration is due to Earth's gravitational pull. The closer you are to a gravitationally dominant object, the faster you go. Just a short time later, Earth loomed large in Orion's view. Orion approached Earth moving from south to north. The white continent on the left is Antarctica. On the right, the sun was rising over Australia. You can kind of see the brown of that continent there. And here we see Orion now traveling at Mach 10. Now this is played at two times uh, speed for pacing, but here we see Orion's descent through the atmosphere. Now this is after it emerged from its, uh, what they call the plasma regime. So as a, uh, here it's performing a, uh, uh, a turn basically, performed a series of turns during its descent through the atmosphere in order to uh, bleed off speed. Uh, which is a standard method used by both capsules and by the space shuttle. Orion, feet um, but in any case, it performed a, um, a skip maneuver where it actually bounced off the atmosphere as it headed basically straight north toward, toward Baja, California from across the Pacific. And uh, it skipped off the atmosphere, and so it had a period of uh, plasma generation as it entered the upper layers of Earth's atmosphere. Uh, producing temperatures of up to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and I don't have the Celsius off the top of my head, but you, you can do the calculation. Um, and then it re-entered the Earth, so it bounced out, and then it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. It, it does this uh, to um, sort of to break up the, uh, the deceleration of, uh, of re-entry so that it's not bearing the brunt of, of decelerating from 25,000 miles per hour down to a few hundred miles per hour all at once. And so here we see uh, the two drogue parachutes deploying. Uh, now, there were only two drogues. Uh, I remember someone in the chat saying that they thought there were three. Now, there are three main parachutes, but only two drogues. And then a uh, short time later, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. And we're on mains. Five okay, so there's the here. Poof. There's the mains. Um, and again, this is sped up a little bit just for pacing. And so they begin um, the the main parachutes when they're initially deployed are what they're what they call furled. They're um, um, you know bound, they're bunched up. 
uh, be and then they're gradually unfurled uh, as the craft slows down, so as not to induce uh, damaging levels of of you know load on the sh on the shoot material itself. I mean, they're tough. They're very robust uh, parachutes, but you know they don't want to don't want to damage them. And here we had our first uh, ground based shot of the uh, of the descending capsule under the parachutes and let me yep here we go this is normal speed let me just make sure yes and here is the splashdown Five hundred feet. Splash down. From Tranquility Base to Taurus Litro to the tranquil waters of the Pacific, the latest chapter of NASA's journey to the moon comes to a close. Orion back on Earth. Congratulations, NASA, uh, uh, Boeing, European partners, everybody who's been involved in, in the Artemis One project. Uh, complete success uh, from launch through uh, flight, circum circumnavigation of the moon, distant retrograde orbit, return and entry descent, and splash down, absolutely perfect all the way around. And so they had uh, Navy ships standing by um, to assist with the recovery of the capsule. Now, I don't know what their projected timeline is for the crewed capsule, which will be uh, in Artemis II and, and subsequent Artemis uh, missions. Um, Artemis II is scheduled for 2024, and that will send four astronauts on a similar trajectory around the moon um, like this one except they won't they won't land and Artemis 3 is currently scheduled for 2025 and that will be our next landing now uh, I don't know what their timeline is for recovering the capsule on a crude launch but this time around anyway uh, they were taking things at a very measured pace um, even two hours after the capsule had splashed down and was bobbing in the ocean in the th three to five foot uh, waves, they you know still had not scooped it up uh, in by the, sh the like the ship still had not scooped it up. So um, I know astronaut astronauts are pretty tough, but I I for one wouldn't want to wouldn't want to be uh, bobbing up and down in the ocean for for two three four hours. Uh, but hopefully they learn what they need to learn from this go round, and when they actually have people aboard, they can do it a little quicker. I know SpaceX with their Crew Dragon splashdowns, they attempt to get the crew out uh, of the capsule within about an hour or so. Uh, so that is it for Artemis One. It is done. Uh, the capsule now that it's loaded on the ship. Presumably, I hope it's, I hope it's been by now. Um, it will be uh, transported by land across the country back to Kennedy Space Center. Uh, they are opting not to load it on the Super Guppy, which is a big, a big bulbous and awkward-looking uh, airplane that can carry oversized cargo. Um, and I don't remember what their stated reason for that was, but. But in any case, they will be hauling it across the country by land. But uh, in any case, congratulations once again to the Artemis team on a mission uh, completely successful. There were lots of delays, but uh, everything worked the way it was supposed to.